Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I tell you, I've enjoyed so much hearing uh, from our council member, Will Jawando. He is powerful, and, uh, and it really is an honor to be here this morning. Um, upon hearing him talk about the fact that his father uh, came here from Nigeria, uh, met his mother, and that they came to the they, uh, came right to the border of Prince George's County. And I have to tell you, I'm a little sorrowful uh, that his father decided to land on that side uh, of the border and not in Prince George's County. Um, and we would certainly love to have claimed him as a native Prince Georgian, but be that as it may, we're proud to have him as our neighbor and, uh, and look forward to working together. I have to also say uh, what a true delight it is to, uh, to have an, uh, an opportunity to be here with His Excellency this morning. Uh, our ambassador, thank you so much, sir, uh, also for the invitation. It's just an honor uh, to be here. And I am excited uh, for a good number of reasons. Uh, I have to tell you that during the time of my campaign uh, last year and the year before, I had uh, an opportunity to be very well supported uh, by the African community. I want to thank my friend Vincent Iwanage, who is uh, here this morning. And to tell you that I was invited, uh, and I also want to thank Elvis, also from our office, who uh, who leads us in this effort to make sure that we are, for, for the very first time uh, in the history of our uh, county's government, we have now have representation on the fourth floor. Uh, we have created a liaison who helps us to stay connected with the uh, with the African uh, community and uh, and the diaspora, and we're really proud of him and the work that he is doing. So thank you so much as well. Um, I attended a meeting during the course of the campaign, I was invited one evening um, to the home of a group called the United Brothers. And, uh, and I did not know what a treat I was in for when Vincent said, you know, you should come and meet the United Brothers. Uh, the United Brothers were, uh, that evening I went down to a basement, uh, they were gathered there in, uh, in very serious business fashion. And I went on to talk with them about my vision for Prince George's and I talked excitedly about the things that we were anticipating when one brave brother stood up uh, after my very nice speech, stood up and, and said to me, uh, looked me in the eye and said, you know what, we're tired of being used. And said to me, I would like for you to promise us that if we support you, this will not be the last time that we see you, but we are so tired of having public officials come into our community to take our votes and do nothing whatsoever for the African community. And, uh, and Vincent will tell you uh, that I looked back at him and I actually raised my hand and said, I swear uh, that if you support me, I will not forget you. Uh, that it would be so important to me that I will remember what we have established here, that you will have a friend and ally in me and that we will work together. I also challenged that group that evening and said, I need you too. And so this is not a one way street. This is I come to you because we need you. Not because you need me, but because we need you. Um, and so I am. I worked in the time that I have had to honor the commitment that I made, and I believe the commitment has been honored in both directions, uh, and with good reason. The African community, in particular, in Prince George's County, is so strong and so robust. How could we operate without the expertise, the intelligence? Um, this true sense of community that the African community brings to Prince George's where nearly 40% of all of our small businesses in Prince George's County are owned uh, by Africans. Um, and so our economy depends on it. But there are so many other areas that we're really proud uh, that we will have an opportunity to, to partner. Uh, Prince George's County is rich because of its diversity. Um, I'm just delighted to hear about Montgomery County, but I have to brag a little bit <laughs> and, uh, and tell you that I don't know the exact percentage. Well, I'm going to get that yeah, down because I'm not even <laughs> about done about the percentage uh, in Montgomery County because I'm going to say without knowing that I bet we are close in hand, if yeah, not probably. ahead, in Prince George's County, but we are certainly rich um, because of our diversity. And, uh, and there is no place like Prince George's County, literally any place in the country. I have to tell you that Prince George's County is the only example in the country that went from majority white to majority black and incomes and education went up and not down. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the single, it is the only example of that in the country. And again, it is in no small part due to the rich diversity that is there and the African community is a, a huge part of that. And so what we have been seeing uh, is that Prince George's County is bursting at the seams, not just with pride, but with opportunity. Um, as we watch our economy grow, part of what is really important to me is to ensure 
and we heard the council members say that every single Prince Georgian, and especially our African community, has the opportunity to participate and to benefit from the prosperity that is in Prince George's. Uh, we have seen that with recent development there uh, in a place where we have, I can just think, for example, of a Hampton Park Mall development project that is coming where we have businesses now uh, that we heretofore could not encourage to come to Prince George's. They can't wait to come to Prince George's County now. Black Americans should bring some of the resilience their forefathers had, some of the innovativeness that their forefathers had, some of the strengths that their forefathers had that made America what America is today. And we are making that request because recognizing the commonality of interest that I mentioned earlier, the one thing between us is a pond between North America and Africa. And therefore, we have to undertake that as a project to bridge that pond. And the year of return ought to constitute the attempt to build, you know, the, uh, as it were, the buttresses for that particular bridge. And when we are looking at it from the point of view of the youth, we, for instance, have 57% of our population under the age of 25. And maybe sometimes when it suits us, even you know, a, a crumpled old guy like me might probably claim to be youth, <laughs> depending, depending on what we are talking about. So we have that huge <coughs> segment of the African population being youthful. And then, of course, the black American population is equally very youthful. And it seems to me that if there should be any future for the rest of us, that future rests on the youth. It rests on their attitudes. It rests on their abilities. It rests on the innovation that they will bring into the system. And it is always going to rest on the fact that they have to recognize that there ought to be a certain kind of link between the two sides of the pond. Africa, within the next you know, 20 years or so, is going to have the bulk of the world's population. It is going to have a greater proportion of the population very uh, youthful, with voracious appetite, willing to consume anything and everything. They would have a, be a better part of the uh, workforce of the, of the world. And the way communications have developed, most of us would not have any choice whatsoever but recognize the necessity for interconnectivity. So what we are trying to do in Ghana is to build the buttresses for this kind of relationship. So for instance, at the moment, the country is committed to a policy that the nation owes every Ghanaian from the age of one day to the age of 18 years, free education, unfettered, because that is the process <coughs> for development. At the same time, we are also committed to the fact that we ought to develop the skills for the workforce of the future. So we are changing the curriculum so that people will recognize what is going to be in so far as the nature of work is concerned, and then also, get people to understand that just being the singular person with a certain kind of singular skill to do whatever it is, is never going to be the answer. We just have to recognize the fact that even though people talk about the world being one village, the current state of the world doesn't say that we are one village. Some people have decided to even erect more barriers insofar as the flow of populations are concerned. And that could be worrying. But at the same time, if we are better trained, if we have the better attitudes, if we have the better viewpoints, if we have a global attitude, a wall or a fence is never going to be a very successful barrier. So I think insofar as our relationship is concerned. The diaspora and the continent 
really do not have a choice but to come closer and closer and closer. Maybe one of these days some black American will invent a system whereby you can have a kind of pair of shoes that will make it possible for you to walk the Atlantic. <laughs> then at least we don't have to pay FS anymore. <laughs> but you see, what is going to be very important, and I, you know, it warms my heart to know that Prince George's, for instance, has the indices which says <clears throat> that there can be. It's a, it's a movement forward. And the indices would also show that the movement has not just been moving forward, but moving forward and raising the stakes. Mm -hmm. That is what is going to be important. I mean, if all we've got is population, it doesn't help. But if what we've got is population, and indeed a qualified population, a quali you know, as to a committed population, that is where the action is going to be. But once we have that, it is going to be very difficult for anyone to, as it were, walk over us the way people have done for so many years. I accept that sometimes under current circumstances, considering the fact that somebody goes and kills somebody in his own flat because he thought that was her flat. Mm. Considering the fact that somebody is cleaning his backyard and somebody shoots him down because he thought he was an intruder. Mm. And all that. In spite of all that, a certain kind of spirit of resist, uh, resilience, a certain kind of spirit of togetherness, a certain kind of uh, spirit which says that if it happens to you, I should consider it as having happened to me. That is where you know, our whole pillar ought to be. In Ghana, at the moment, we are also trying very hard to improve on the education system insofar as even the curriculum content is concerned. This is not a day for anybody to go and get a degree in ancient Greek, even if you want to be a lawyer. <laughs> But at least this is the time for somebody to be able to read and understand. The time for somebody to be able to look on the computers and such and understand something. You know, if you are if you are as slow as I am, your my telephone, I use it for two things. Make a call, receive a call. But then I see some people playing the you know, telephone as if it's virtually everything and anything. So I have some education to undertake <laughs> before I recognize that I'm out of this world. <laughs> but I would want to stress the fact that throughout all that, that element of innovation, the <coughs> application of the innovation, which as it were translates into entrepreneurial activity, is also going to be very necessary. I think we should all try as much as possible to wean our youth mm -hmm. away from having to get up in the morning and expect that there would be a certain stipend coming from the state. And sometimes, in even in claiming that as an entitlement, you always have some stumbles to jump over. And I can testify to the fact that in my own country, and I've noticed in other countries, every time, that you have to ask it to pick something of the state, you would always come across people who believe that their importance is directly related to the amount of grief that they can give you. And therefore, one ought to be able to withdraw from that because one has, one, the know-how, two, the entrepreneurial spirit, and three, the will to succeed. Uh, we have a project around the New Carrollton Metro Station, which happens to be the station with the most multimodal, it's the most multimodal hub of transportation in the state, uh, and is also uh, also in the country. We have six different modes of transportation at the New Carrollton Metro Station, and so we now have about a billion dollar development project that is happening right there 
uh, in New Carrollton and many, many opportunities uh, for the African community to participate there and other places, including Largo, downtown Largo, which we are very excited about, where we have our new Capital Region Medical Facility that is coming to Largo, uh, where we will see many, many opportunities uh, to bring physicians and others in the medical profession uh, to do business and to compete right there in Largo. And so I am really excited um, about the opportunity to partner to have the African diaspora community represented uh, in Prince George's County in business and um, medicine and education and healthcare and all of these various uh, areas, we are really excited about, uh, about it. Vincent told us something that was important. You know, Shirley Chisholm said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, then bring a folding chair. Well, Vincent educated us recently during our African Diaspora Advisory Board meeting where he said, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Um, and so this was <laughs> this was um, a news to many of us, and we, you know, so to make it clear, uh, we don't. And nobody needs to bring their own chair, and they are not on the menu because for so long as I am county executive, you will always have a seat at the table and a strong voice. Um, and again, I, I can't say enough to you that it is um, that uh, it is not the case that you need our administration. I can't stress to you enough that we keep showing up because we need you. Uh, so desperately in order to, to make sure that our families continue uh, to grow and to thrive and that we grow together. Um, and so as I told you um, a bit about um, Prince George's, I want to just tell you um, a couple of um, other facts about us um, that we have there, the um, top 4% uh, wealthiest county in the country. Again, we are very proud of that, um, that uh, we have a median income of $81,000. And again, I say this because there is no place like Prince George's look around the country uh, and see another majority African-American and African uh, county uh, where you have this kind of prosperity. But it is only uh, through our combined efforts that it will grow in a way that allows our children uh, to continue what we are growing there uh, and that we have the obligation to make sure uh, that they do well and that they continue to enjoy the prosperity that is America. So I won't um, continue to go on here. I am just really pleased to have been invited. I'm excited about the partnership. I want to hear more about the uh, the sister city relationship that is happening because again, you won't go without us, Will Jawando. <laughs> I want you to know that that as he's around in Ghana and other places, I want you to know that they will certainly see my face as yes. well and see uh, uh, Prince George's. We are eager also to develop those relationships and uh, and we're really going to, uh, to to work on making sure that we're able to establish some of the sister city relationships and to build the economy around it, to take those economic opportunities uh, that exist here and also uh, in Africa, we're e eager to establish it. And I just wanted to end with the quote that maybe I overquote now, and it's just my absolute favorite, <laughs> Vincent is already laughing, uh, because no truer thing has ever been said when the African proverb said, if you want to go quickly, go alone, mm -hmm. but if you want to go far, go together. And so that is certainly what we are focused on, is making sure that unity uh, is top of list for us and that we go places together. And I know that we will continue to go far because of it. And again, want to thank you for inviting me um, to be here today. And then I'll just say something that is, um, we talked about it before I came up a moment ago, but I think it's so appropriate today to pay homage to our brother Elijah mm -hmm. Cummings, yes. uh, who passed on and is, uh, this morning woke up in glory, and uh, and I think he is such an amazing example uh, for all of us um, of what is expected of us during our time here on earth. And, um, and I know that all of us will be in prayer for his family, but I am inspired also. And I, I felt renewed um, actually this morning upon reflecting on his life. He reminded us what our ob solemn obligation is. I don't think I ever saw Elijah when he was talking about himself, except to inspire. Instead, he spent his whole life uh, talking about how to empower others. And, um, and I think it is a wonderful uh, reminder to all of us, first of all, um, that our time here um, is limited. Our time here is limited and that once we pass on, similar to Elijah, nobody will remember us, but they will only remember what we contributed. Mm -hmm. So the conversation today will be about what we have left behind. And I think we have the opportunity to leave something together that is so rich and so beautiful. And I'm just really honored to be a part of it. So thank you all again for having me. God bless you.